this video, I convert this context-free grammar into a tree-adjoining grammar that accepts the same tree language. That's an important point, because the context-free grammar generates a string language. You can convert a context-free grammar, for instance, into a Chomsky normal form or into Greibach normal form. And um, the grammars would be called equivalent because they are generating the same string language. But for a tree adjoining grammar, the, what for the context-free grammar are the derivation trees. It is part of, uh, of the tree adjoining grammar's tree language. That means you can have two equivalent context-free grammars, but their corresponding tree adjoining grammars would be not would not be equivalent, because if you convert a context-free grammar, the string language stays the same, but the derivation steps, so the derivation trees are, will change. So, the tree adjoining grammar for this context-free grammar looks like this. I'm doing this formal. It consists of a set of Non-terminals, it's the same set as the one in the context-free grammar. A set of terminals, it's also the same as in the, con the context-free grammar. The start symbol is the same. And in the tree adjoining grammar, we are having a set of initial trees and auxiliary trees. Well, the set of auxiliary trees is also very easy, because in this case, it's just empty. That's because the auxiliary trees or the adjunction, it's what the tree adjoining grammar, it's what makes the tree adjoining grammar more powerful than the context free grammar. So if we don't have any adjunction and only substitution, the tree adjoining grammar will be as powerful as a context free grammar. And um, to be clear, exactly this would be this could be called a tree substitution grammar, not only a tree adjoining grammar, because we don't really have a junction here. Now the, the initial tree that's what where it's get it gets interesting, because for that we are taking the rules. For instance, let's take this rule. And we convert it directly to the corresponding der derivation tree. Let's call this alpha 1. And this will have s as a root node. And all terminals and non-terminals on the right-hand side will, get their own, will become their own daughter nodes. So in this case, two a's, one non-terminal a, and two b's. And that's what we are doing now for every rule. So for this rule, we, we create another um, initial tree. Let's call it alpha 2. Again, with s as the root node and with a as the only child node. Then we have this rule. Let's make a new alpha 3 tree with s as root node and where epsilon is the only child node. Then we are having this rule, that's where a is the mother node and two a's are the child nodes. And this rule with a as the mother node, or let's call it alpha 5. A as mother node and B as the only child node. So now we are having the tree adjoining grammar. And maybe you wonder how is it equivalent to the context free grammar or how does it work yet? Well, if you take the context free grammar and you do a derivation, for example, you start with the start symbol, you derive, you use this rule to get the A, then you maybe use that rule to get two more a's and then two more steps you will convert the two a's to two terminal b's and if you write down the tree for this derivation you get you have the s as the mother node with the a 
with two A daughter nodes and with, with each of them having a B as daughter node. Now, if you're doing the same with the tree adjoining grammar, you will start with with the alpha 2 tree. Then, by substitution, you will apply the alpha 4 tree into that. Then, by two more substitutions, you will apply the alpha 5 tree into each of the daughter nodes. And as you can see now here, this tree is exactly the same one as this tree. And therefore, we now have a tree adjoining grammar that generates the tree language as the derivations of the context-free grammar are doing.